And I want you to catch this. What tractors are to farming, the Holy Spirit is to the Christian spiritual life. So let's talk about who or what the Holy Spirit is for a moment. In the Bible, the Holy Spirit, that you'll remember, Christians see God in Trinitarian terms. We see God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Son is God. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and it makes my brain hurt to try to fully explain that, but I just know it's true. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is God's indwelling presence in our lives. And the Greek word in the New Testament for spirit is pneuma from which you may uh, recognize the word pneumatic. Pneumatic is any tool that's operated by the power of, of wind or air. And the word spirit in Greek, again, the pneuma, also means breath or air or wind. It means all of those things. So it can mean spirit, breath, air, or wind. And you just look at the context to see what that means. So the Holy Spirit is the holy breath of God, the holy wind of God, the holy, you know, the air, you know, that we breathe, all of that is, is that's kind of bound up together in the Holy Spirit. In the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, it's the same idea. Ruach is the term, ruach. And ruach is this idea, again, of spirit, wind, air, breath, all of these things are what scripture, you know, is this word, these words are what scripture is using to describe the spirit of God. And in the Old Testament, we find that the Holy Spirit was uh, primarily falling upon, you know, people doing extraordinary things. Now, the Bible begins with God creating human beings in the Garden of Eden, and he breathes on them the breath of life or into them the breath of life. The word breath, again, is spirit. It's ruach in Hebrew or in Greek, it would be pneuma. And so God is breathing the spirit into them, his spirit and, and creating the human spirit. Uh, but after that, most of what we find is the Holy Spirit is primarily in the domain of kings who are going to rule by the Spirit or prophets or, you know, there were times there were the special artisans who had particular gifts and they thought the Spirit of God was upon that person to give them the gifts to be able to create beautiful things. So this is in the Hebrew Bible. But when you get to the book of Joel in the Old Testament, the prophet Joel, Joel makes this promise. He says this, uh, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. What Joel foretold was realized in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit was a work in the conception of both John the Baptist and in the conception of Jesus. We find the Holy Spirit uh, coming upon Jesus in his baptism. We find he was doing these works, these powerful works of healing and uh, all by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and then we find that Jesus promises his disciples on the night before he is arrested, or the night he's arrested, the night before he's crucified. And then later on, before he leaves them after his resurrection, he makes this promise, I'm going to send or the Father will send the Holy Spirit to you. The Holy Spirit will be your comforter, will be your guide, your counselor, or we'll teach you all things that you, know, that you need to know. We'll give you the words to say when called upon to testify. The Holy Spirit will give you, well, here's what Jesus said uh, after his resurrection. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There it is, power. Those tractors were all about harnessing power in order to produce more, in order to do more of what, what farmers were trying to do. And in the case of the Holy Spirit's presence in our life, you will receive power. The Greek word is dunamis, from which we have the word dynamite, you will receive power to be God's witnesses, to be Christ's witnesses. What is a witness? Well, it's not just somebody who talks about Jesus. It's somebody who lives their life in such a way that people see a compelling picture of the kingdom of God and of Jesus. The word uh, witness in Greek is martyria, from which we have the word martyr. Somebody who's willing to lay down their life for what they believe. And so being Christ's witnesses and the power to be his witnesses is both what we say, but it's how we live our lives. 